this video, we're going to take a quick look at solving some radical equations. Now before we do, I want to think just about what's the goal of solving any equation. Well, if you want to solve an equation, you have a variable that you're trying to find the value of. And to get that variable by itself, you really you want, in the end, you want a variable equals some number. And the way you get there is you start taking opposite operations until you get that x or whatever that variable is by itself. So to be able to do that, we need to know something about inverse operations. So the inverse of, let's say, addition would be subtraction. If we had multiplication, the inverse to that, that would cancel it out, would be division. Now we're going to take a look at equations that have sort of a new operation. We're going to take a look at some that have a square root, and the inverse of that is to square. Like here's a quick example. We would probably all agree that the square root of 64 is 8. Now if I wanted to get rid of that square, or the square root, I would do the inverse and square both sides. What's going to happen here is that on the right side, 8 squared is 64, and on the left side, the radical and the square, they cancel each other out, and I'm just left with what was underneath, which is a 64. And that is still obviously a true statement. So let's take that idea and look at a few examples of solving a radical, equa radical equation. Let's say we have square root of x plus 3 minus 7 is equal to uh, 2. So the goal here is to get this variable x by itself, most likely on the left side. So I want to get rid of this plus 3, I want to get rid of this minus 7, I want to get rid of this square root. So let's think about what operation we could do to both sides. Well, the first thing I can get rid of here is this minus 7 that's on, on the outside. And I can get rid of that by adding 7 to each side. That's going to leave us with x plus 3 equals 2 plus 7 is 9. Now what I want to do is get rid of that square root. Can't do anything with a plus 3 right now because it's sort of trapped in that radical. So I want to get rid of that square root first by doing the inverse. So I'm going to take that whole side and I'm going to square it. Anything I do to the left side, I have to do to the right side. So I'm going to square the left side. Square cancels out the radical and I have x plus 3. Square the right side and I get 81. We'll subtract 3 from each side, and x is going to equal 81 minus 3, which is 78. If you wanted to go ahead and check this in a calculator, what you would do is just kind of type it in exactly as you see it. I'm going to take the square root of 78, uh, let's get some parentheses in there, of 78 plus 3, close that, that's all inside the square root, and I'm going to subtract 7, and if this is the right answer, I should get 2. And I got 2. So it worked. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say I have uh, 3 radical x plus 6 equals 12. All right, so the first thing I want to do here is I want to get rid of this 3 that's being multiplied. I want to get rid of that 6 that's being added. I want to get rid of that radical, which is taking the square root. Um, so think about what we can do first here. The one thing that we can't do first here is square both sides. If we squared both sides, this is what would happen. So if I took this 3 radical x plus 6 side and I squared it, what would happen is I would have this binomial, 3 radical x plus 6, 3 radical x plus 6. And I'm going to distribute that out and it's just going to make a huge mess. And you can't just go in and take a part of a side and just square a piece. That is mathematically incorrect. I can't do that. So I want to get rid of this other stuff first. So I'm going to try to get rid of that plus 6 by subtracting it from both sides. So 3 radical x is equal to 6. And now I've got a couple options. I could square both sides or I could divide by 3. I'm going to go ahead and divide by 3 this time. Get radical x is equal to 2. Inverse of that radical is to square both sides and that cancels the radical, I get x equals 2 squared is 4. Let's go ahead and see if this worked. So I'm going to take the uh, 3 times the square root of 4 plus 6, and I should get 12, and I did. Now I want to take a look at what we could have done 
from this step. So let's go back to this step where we had um, 3 radical x equals 6. Let's take a look at that. Now I said that we could have squared both sides here, and let's see what happens when you do. If you're squaring the left side, put it in parentheses. You're squaring everything on the left side. Squaring the right side, put in parentheses. Square everything on that side. On the left side, the 3 is being squared, and I have 9. Radical x is being squared, and I get x. On the right side, I get 36. I can now divide by 9, and I get my solution again, x equals 4. So as long as you're doing mathematically okay steps, then you are going to be in good shape. I want to take a look at another example here of something that could happen as you're solving a radical equation. So let's say I have the square root of x plus 1 plus 7 is equal to 5. Well, if I want to solve for x, first thing I might do is subtract 7 from both sides. Square root x plus 1 is equal to negative 2, and something might look already kind of fishy. I'm taking a square root of a number and getting a negative. Well, this is looking at a positive square root. Couldn't come out as a negative number. So I don't think I'm going to get a valid solution here. But we'll keep going anyway. If you square the left side, you get x plus 1. Square the right side, negative 2 squared is 4. I seem to have gotten a solution of x equals uh, 3. But if we go back into the equation and check it, I have 3 plus 1 in the square root plus 7 equals 5. Well, that's going to be square root 4 plus 7 equals 5. That's 2 plus 7 equals 5. And that's going to be 9 equals 5, which is not true. So I know this solution is invalid. That is called an extraneous solution. And I have really no solution here.